and I'd like to introduce the speaker of the day, Fran Ward. She is an active chapel member, artist, and novelist. She has been a chapel member since May 29, 2005. She has served as speaker, teacher, board member, and is past president of the board. Fran is an avid supporter of arts and culture in Hampton in the Hampton Rose area and has traveled to many other countries to present her art and teachings. She lectures on the arts and principles in culture and spiritual exchange while pursuing her own metaphysical path. She has authored the novels Travels with Ellen and Beyond the Drawbridge and can best be described <coughs> as written in the latest review of Travels with Ellen. Her life reads like a fairy tale Fran's story is about empowerment and self-expression. There are elements of the magical and mystical woven right into the story. It is a masterpiece that is not often seen in adventure fairy tales. Fran shares what she has learned from the different spiritual practices and cultural exchanges she has encountered during her travels. Please join us in welcoming Fran as she shares her insights. Hello, my topic today is Men in Black. I'm Fran Ward, a member of the Chapel of Life, and I have the honor and privilege of sharing some thoughts and experiences with you today. I had a different topic prepared. Then I attended a birthday party last Saturday when Spirit reminded me that Spirit will choose the topic. Thank you very much. <laughs> Spirit didn't come out and say it like that, but that's pretty close. <laughs> Spirit sends us help whenever we need it, and even when we think we don't need it. Help can come physically, mentally, or spiritually. Help can arrive in the form of angels, guides, or masters, and in different disguises. I've had angels appear to me before. I'm grateful for the angel that bruised my foot in Virginia Beach, slamming its angel foot down on my foot, leaving a bruise but no broken bones and leaving me and my car intact when we were about to be crushed by cars from two directions. Psalm 91, 11, 12. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone or a brake pedal. Mm -hmm. My most recent angel sighting came in the form of a Japanese lady last Saturday at a birthday party. She said, I know you. I said, we've never met. She said, I mean from before, in another life. She didn't open the door. She opened the floodgates, and there was no stopping the flow. I told her that one other time I had an instant connection with someone from lifetimes ago. Let me tell you from the beginning. I had a dream one night. I could see beyond the veil. I could see around the veil, through the veil, and in a reflection from the veil. I'm an artist, so I knew that I could translate my dream vision into an artwork. The next day, I was invited to participate in an art show in Japan. Synchronicity? They asked if I could make something for it. Of course. How big is it? I said, three feet by three feet. They said, can you make it bigger? Of course. I pulled the dimensions 13 feet by 13 feet out of nowhere. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were all kinds of problems with my keeping my word to create a monstrous yet delicate work. Without going into detail, I completed it and shipped it to Japan. It was the first work that ever hung from the ceiling of Tokyo Municipal Museum. Beyond the Veil created a, a sensation. I'll leave the artwork now to tell you about packing for the trip. My open suitcases were on the bed, ready to be filled. All of a sudden, I was struck as if by lightning. I was thrown onto the bed on top of my suitcases. I was paralyzed. I couldn't move my legs or arms. I couldn't reach for the phone on the nightstand. 
A few hours passed and I was a little better, but not at full strength. I couldn't let my husband at the time see my condition. He would have tried to prevent me from going, but there was no stopping me. I had to move when he could not see that I couldn't walk. When we arrived at Norfolk Airport, I told him that because of new security regulations, he couldn't park, would say goodbye there. He put my luggage on the sidewalk and left. The porter came over, saw that I couldn't walk and brought me a wheelchair. He carried my luggage to check in. I was wheeled to the gate where I waited and was wheeled onto the plane. We flew to Detroit for the connecting flight to Tokyo. Arriving in Detroit, I asked the airline hostess, how far was it to my gate? She said, not far. That was not far for a walking person, but I wasn't walking well. I thought when she said not far, that I could walk there. But after a few steps, I had to improvise and sat on the ground and scooted myself along under my own steam, sitting on the coat I was wearing. I dragged myself to the gate. The flight was 17 hours long and I had hoped that I would have recovered enough to walk once I arrived. I might have had enough steam, except that when we landed, the runway was covered with ice, so the plane didn't land at our gate. We had to walk on slush and ice to our gate. By the time I finally reached the gate, I collapsed, and then they brought a wheelchair. My artist friend and host, Akiko, was waiting in the airport, alarmed and concerned. When we arrived in Tokyo after a long bus ride, she brought me to the Japanese monastery where I would be staying. She called her husband, who is an artist with Disney and a healer, to come see me. But for the three weeks that I was in Japan that time, I could walk only short distances, at most a few blocks at a time. People passed me without reacting as I scooted myself in Tokyo on my coat everywhere I had to go. I felt like I was in a Laverne and Shirley situation comedy. The art show was a success and I delivered the keynote address despite having laryngitis. My translator delivered my speech in Japanese, paragraph by paragraph, after I spoke in English. It was received with thunderous applause and the ultimate praise when everyone clapped once in unison. I was the guest of honor at the reception that followed at a Chinese <coughs> restaurant. For the next three weeks, Akiko and I were on our planned trip to Kyoto, the first capital of Japan. We stayed in an ancient Ryokan and slept on tatami mats. Akiko had hired a driver to take us around to see the temples and shrines in Kyoto, a world heritage city. When our driver arrived, we recognized each other instantly. I used to call him my governor. He could see that I couldn't walk. So everywhere, everywhere we went, he picked me up and carried me. He brought me to every Buddhist temple and Shinto shrine in Kyoto. He carried me up many stone steps. When we went to the Imperial Golden Palace of the Emperor, I fell onto my knees and wept. It was so beautiful. It sparkled like the snowflakes in the air. I asked, what happened to the little bridge that went to the left? And where's the little island? And then I had a vision of my father on his deathbed. I said to Akiko, my friend, and you are there, you are my mother, and he was my father. I was the military ruler to be, and my driver was my governor. Next, he carried me to the bleachers in the famous Zen rock garden, where I thought visitors could rake the sand. We could not. That was up to the monks. Spectators sit in the bleachers and watch the sand silently. It was like a meditation. I took one photo of sunlight streaming down like a spotlight onto the center rock in the circle. It's the best photo I've ever taken. When our memorable visit to Kyoto ended, we took the bullet train back to Tokyo and Akiko delivered me to another surprise where I recognized another old friend, Michio Kenmochi, and we became close friends in this lifetime too. She treated me to many of Japan's treasures. We went to Onsen, the famous experience where you take many baths. 
We took the three hour train ride to the mountains and arrived in the town that National Geographic features where monkeys have snow in their whiskers and they're sitting in the natural hot springs. We bathed in each of the pools of different water temperatures or under a waterfall and in a sauna. After lunch, Michio went in for another round of baths. I was ready for a nap on the futon in our room. As I was falling off to sleep, a man appeared in the room. He was wearing black robes, sandals, and a hat that looked like a little black pastry box that tied under his chin with shoestrings. I felt safe and fall, fell asleep. I asked Michio when she returned to the room who that was. She never answered me, but I found him on Wikipedia one day. He was the founder of a religious order and a form of martial arts. I lost that page and never found him again. He was elusive. I called him my man in black. The next day, Michio and I had another different experience. We went to the Ginza, a high-end designer shopping street like Rodeo Drive. I had always heard of a stationery store there, so I went in to buy post postcards. I found origami book bookmarks of my man in black. I wanted to purchase several. I went to the register, but my wallet was not in my backpack. I called out to Michio, my wallet is gone. Two women went running out of the store. Shopkeepers chased the women who threw my wallet onto the ground. I knew it was my man in black who had protected me and my wallet. In Japan, I delivered a number of energy lectures. Before one lecture with 300 people attending, I held the door open for the guests. Also walking through the door were about 300 men in black wearing sandals and wearing little black pastry boxes on their heads. When I started to deliver my address, it was a situation like today. I said, my talk is already printed for you in Japanese and in English, but I want to talk about something different now instead. I told them about onsen, the baths, the ginza, my man in black, and that many men in black had joined us that day and were lining the walls of the auditorium. I told everyone that I was sending them home with a party favor a man in black. I said, before you go to sleep, ask your man in black his name. He might tell you. Ask him why he, is, why he is with you. He might tell you. Even if you don't know the answers, he is there to help you. I knew my Japanese was better than I thought when I had to correct my translator. I said, no, they are not black men. They are men dressed in black. Their skin is not black and they are at your right elbow, not your left. I'm telling you about them because you get a party favor today, too. Oops. Everyone who listens to this address will receive a man in black. Whether you are here in the chapel today, somewhere in Zoom, or hearing this on YouTube anytime, you now have a man in black to protect you. He is at your right elbow. Before you go to sleep, ask him his name. He might tell you. Ask him why he's there. He might tell you. So I gave the lady at the birthday party a party favor. I gave her a man in black with the same instructions I gave you. She hugged me and I didn't think she would ever let go. She cried. We are guided when we need to be guided or when spirit knows we need guidance. We are here to serve each other and to serve spirit by listening to learn about ourselves, who we are, what we can do and what else we can do where we are and where we should be going. There is a Bible verse about being given guidance when we need it. From Exodus 23, 20. Behold, I send, you an, I send an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. The last night I was in Japan, I got up during the night and the light bulb in the bathroom blew. Everything became clear to me. That jolt of energy I received when I was packing was an extra boost of energy to carry me through Japan. Several years later, I had the opportunity to receive psychic surgery. The surgeon reached into my left calf. There was no incision, no bleeding or pain, as he pulled out what sounded like three bullets as he dropped them in the stainless steel surgery bowl. 
They were the result of the bolt of energy that had fried my legs. I received a bigger dose than I was accustomed to handle at the time. Thank you for letting me take you on a little trip to Japan today. Thank you for the opportunity to remind us that spirit is always with us. Spirit is good for sur surprises, and we don't always recognize the disguises spirit uses to appear to us as angels, guides, and masters. In conclusion, from Luke 4, 10, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you. Thank you. Thank you.